When I think of a radio talk show host, I think of this woman, uh, this wonderful woman. I mean, she has several talk shows and has had many talk shows, including Raising the Vibration, a global movement created to make the earth a kinder, gentler, and more peaceful place for everyone. Um, she is an artist, uh, a humanist, a spiritualist. She is Sheena Metal. Hello, my friend. Oh, hello, hello. Good to see your beautiful face. Oh, likewise, as my dad would say, ditto. And I was thinking about you this morning and thinking I'm gonna get to see you because I really haven't seen you in a long time. And I, was, I haven't seen anybody in a long time. <laughs> I know, none, none of us have. <laughs> but I started tearing up because yeah. you- I miss you. Well, I miss you and you give, you have an energy about you that really makes people feel welcome. Thank and you. And so that's why you're, you're Sheena Metal. <laughs> you know, um, I always, I always laugh that if I believed in having a tombstone, which I don't, yeah. I would hope it would just stay on it. You know, here lies Sheena. She was nice. I mean, I think that we sometimes underestimate the simple things in life, like just be nice, you know? Yeah. Yeah. God, we need that right now. And hopefully it's, it's shifting. It's shifting. It's coming. Baby. It's coming. <laughs> The ethers are shifting and the veil is lifting. Be ready for the nice. Here it comes. The <laughs> nice is coming. The age, so, of the, Aqua the age of Aquarius. Aquarius. That's me, baby. <laughs> that's right. So what made you want to be a talk show host, love being a talk show host? You know, I had no idea I wanted to be a talk show host. I, I was an actor and... Um, for lack of better things to do in the 80s when women who didn't look like a Barbie doll really worked. Mm -hmm. um, everybody said, oh, you'll work when you're 40, come back then. The problem was I was 21. So I created a television show for myself based on a one woman show I had done of characters. And it was about this crazy heavy metal chick named Sheena Metal. And um, I guess I was being a talk show host then, not knowingly because I did interview people, but it wasn't really an interview until the, the whole thing was scripted. And then at the end, I would, I would interview a band and that was unscripted. Right. And then uh, it got picked up by a production company that was gonna produce it for television. And it was the best day of my life. And the next day we had a little earthquake in Northridge and oh, yeah. the studio got destroyed. And they called me and said, look, we're, we may be out of business. It's a $2 million, $20 million rebuild we may be, it's going to be at least two years. And I suddenly thought, well, this is what I've worked for my whole life. And now it's gone. And I have no idea what to do. And uh, that next day, uh, a, a guy that I knew who was also doing a local cable show. Yeah. His was kind of like a Hollywood talk show, entertainment tonight kind of thing. He called me up and he said, I do this radio show on an AM station, two o'clock in the morning on Sunday. I have a new girlfriend. She hates that we can't go out of town on the weekends. Do you want my show for a night? Enjoy it. They'll probably fire you the next day. Oh. So, so I was an actor, right? And we were taught to say yes. So I said, sure, I'll take it. Yeah. And I went down. I did brought a couple of friends of mine as co-hosts. I let everybody I knew in the music community from the TV show know that I'm going to have this show tonight. Call in, talk about your band. I thought no one would call. <clears throat> we got down there. The phone lines were lit up. I woke up the next morning having really fallen in love with it and believed it was a destiny of mine and thought, oh, great, now I'm going to get the phone call. They're going to fire me. Sure o'clock Monday morning, the phone call came in. And they said, uh, do you want twice as much time? You don't have enough time to accommodate all your phone lines, all your phone calls. So that was it. And that was um, this week, actually, is my 26th radio anniversary. And normally, right, my friend, we would be celebrating at the Hollywood Improv this week. Oh, right. right. There, is, there is no anything happening right now so we're celebrating here yeah you yeah. and me yeah. um, and that's it and i guess by the second week i knew i was in love i mean by the second week i knew i always say that there are there are only really three times in life that i feel sort of like for lack of a better term the hand of god touched my head and yeah. it was the first time i stepped on a stage as an actor 
the first the first time I sat behind a microphone as a talk radio host, and and when I made the shift in my life to uh, founding the Raising the Vibration movement, and I think those are really in my life's work, sort of the three distinct parts of my life that the three times that I feel like I've sort of upgraded my life. And um, I, I, it would took a while to let go of, but wait a minute, aren't I just an actor? Uh, Can I also be this thing? And what about the characters I always played? And now people are seeing me as me and I'm having to talk. When, when I first started in radio, I thought, I'm not going to say a thing about my personal life. Because I grew up Irish and very private. Uh, my mother was a very private person. My parents were depression era people. But then, you know, after a couple of weeks, <laughs> what are you going to talk about? <laughs> so you start talking about yourself. And, you know, when we were coming up as actors, David, we were taught nobody wants to know about your life, what you think. They just want your characters to speak for you. So it took me, now life is very different, but it took me a long time in the late 90s when I started to learn that it was okay to talk about myself and how I felt. And now I think we know that that, that that shift in radio from the good morning, you're listening to WLPL in Baltimore, where it was all scripted to talk hosts and radio hosts really talking about themselves, was kind of the beginnings of social media and people starting to talk about themselves. And we're learning that people talking about how they feel about things right. is really something that majorly heals the world because yeah. we're all in this together, right? We're one human family. And we all, we all work off of each other's energies. So it's nice when you type in something like a TV show you like, or um, you know, kind of food you like, or something you've seen in the news, and go on a Twitter or Facebook and see how many other people that's also affected, and they're talking about it too. Yeah. And I think that's changed the whole world. And we're seeing now that actors, right? Those of us that were taught never to talk about how we felt, are now the ones that are oftentimes our opinions and our love and our, our passion is what's sort of fueling the world along sociologically and spiritually and politically. And so who knew all along uh, people didn't want to know what actors thought. Right. Oh, so, you know, so I, I mean, I think that that spreading of the message, I always say that I feel sort of like um, I'm a sponge. The, 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 the guests come on and they speak through me and my job is just to interpret the messages out to the listening audience. Right. And that's, that's the best thing in the world. The guests are the stars, and I'm just sort of the, the thing that holds it all together. Well, you, know? and you do it so well. And through you, whether it's in the, the, um, the radio station or whether it's on the stage at the Hollywood sure. Improv, sure. Um, those, I mean, people would, wait, when's the next one, Sheena? When's the next right. They're right? so yes. great. Yes. And yeah, and I, I don't know, I don't have no answer for that because I don't know when they're going to let us out of our houses, but I would imagine soon when we all come out again. Yeah, I love it. And I love the, you know, and that was before I really knew that I was going to start teaching or that I would start motivational speaking or that I would become a minister as I have an interfaith minister and start, you know, holding gatherings for raising the vibration. And who knew all of those things? It all started with talk radio. And I think one of the things I always tell when I speak with actors and I have with you at Myth the Bids and at Performing Arts Studio West is that it's, it's as an actor, you can't think of yourself as a, as a straight line. You have to think of yourself as a circle and all the possibilities of the things that you can do. And just because you say, well, I can't write or I, nobody would hire me as a director. I don't know that I want to produce. You have to leave all that stuff open because you don't know what your life is going to become as an artist. Yeah. You have no idea what's going to happen. Um, you may think you can't sing and then you may get cast in something where you have to sing a lot or a little, take some voice lessons or not, and then discover, guess what? I can sing. Right. So I think as actors, I think we grew up in this very limited perspective of if you're an actor, then you can't be anything else. And you know, musicians that dared to act or actors that dared to do music. It was this shocking thing. Now it's just they everybody does everything. Right. And, you know, thank you, the Disney Channel, for that. <laughs> and I, I really believe that it's it's important for actors to think of themselves as artists. Yes. And an artist is a 360 of all these different things you might be able to do and, and not limit yourself because... What? Yeah. Yeah, and you, you, you think, you look back at uh, also, you know, with Streisand and and Margaret, sure. and I mean, they did it all. They sang, danced, they, you know, 
Absolutely. Acted. Liza Minnelli. My mama used to say that Liza Minnelli was one of the best actresses out there and that she was so underrated because she had pathos. She All used right. to say that when you watch Liza Minnelli in something, you could actually feel everything her character was feeling. Right. And so this idea that, look, Sting, right, turned out to be a great actor. Uh, Harry Connick Jr., a great actor. I think that Diana if you're Ross. an artist, a great actress. If you're an artist, I think you have that, that flame inside of you to make art. And art can be anything. It can be radio. It can be acting. It can be producing somebody else's thing. It can be comedy. It can be, you know, painting or sculpting or it's all art. And now we have these wonderful you know, social media platforms and YouTube and TikTok and where people can go out now and do absolutely anything they want and just try it. If you don't like it, delete it. But, but don't stop trying new things yeah. because um, art is magic. And those of us that have that desire in us for art, we just need to keep making art. It doesn't matter, you know, what we're doing. We just need to be doing something. I think especially at this time too. Sure. This is really, it feeds us right now. Absolutely. Yeah. And how lucky there, there was a time, right, when we were actors only in the 80s and the 90s, when if something like this quarantine had happened, there would have been nothing for us to do this whole time, but sit by the pool and complain we weren't acting. You know, now, I mean, that sounds like a pretty good life, just sitting by the pool complaining. But if now, you have a pool. <laughs> exactly right. But now so many people, this is their time where they are writing and creating content. And um, I tell all of my clients in my spiritual practice, now's the time. Write your novel, write your screenplay, put your YouTube channel together, create a little web series with you as the star and start doing it. Cause we're all just probably sitting around till the end of the year. Why not do something? You know, I built a website. I'm the worst artist in the world. I can't even draw a stick person. Like I draw a heart and people say, what is that? Is that a raccoon? What is it? It's but art. <laughs> one day I just decided that my whole life I had waited for some magic person to create my website and it wasn't happening. And I went to a free platform, Wix, and I looked at it and I saw a place where I could upload a banner. And I thought, oh, well, I have a banner somebody made for me. And then I just typed in a title and now I have this really amazing spiritual website that I created myself. And now I'm going to go back and do one for my nonprofit. Then I'm going to go back and do one for my entertainment career. But it, once you start, it's so easy. It's just those barriers that tell you you can't do it that we need to push out of the way. Right. Um, you know, I could keep t talking to you, just I you know. and me, and, and, you know, for hours. But, uh, and we have two amazing um, students, and uh, uh, not just students at Performing Arts Studio West. They are, uh, uh, they're actors, they're they're writers, they're um, um, advocates. We have um, Mark Pulver, who is an author and an actor. Uh, we also have Kaylee Versfeld, who is an advocate and entrepreneur, and I don't wanna even limit with those words. So I am gonna step away from the position and, and have Sheena now be the, uh, the, the oh. interviewer. <laughs> I can do that. All right, good. I know Someone you just can. needs to give me the heads up when we need to wrap it up because I will talk all day. So I'm used to doing four hour interviews. So just come pop in when we're done and let me know, my friend. I'll just go 10, <laughs> exactly. 10 minutes. All right, that's good. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. It's been a while to see you again. You know, it's terrific know, it's as always. So it's so good to see you. I'm giving you a virtual hug. It's not so much fun when I don't get to hug. Yeah, you. Yeah. There you Yay. go. Yay. Good to see you, sweetie. So, so tell me, Thank David, introduced you as an advocate and an entrepreneur. So what, what do those things mean to you? Why do you pick, I'm always fascinated with why people pick certain words to describe themselves. Ugh, that's a <laughs> Um... Well, I put kindness is contagious. This is around my peaceful business called Types of Kindness. I Beautiful. And I go out to public to come and speak as well. And ah, thank you, David. I know. I'm. That's her shirt. Oh, wow. That's my that's that. Okay. That's awesome. 
Speaking of mm-hmm. that, thank you, David, for doing that. You just made my day. Namaste to you. Namaste. Oh, beautiful. Namaste. Oh, you picked out a nice spiritual girl for me. I'm loving this, David. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> when I think my that, I, I just put my hard work into my dedication for the public. Sure. I'm 25 was today, and it says it's an occasion. And that's how I became a public speaker to my community for that. Beautiful. Beautiful. You talked about kindness earlier, right? Um, yeah. I was talking when David was interviewing me earlier about how I hope that someday, if I, if I had a tombstone, it would say, here lies Sheena, she was nice. I think, I think we underestimate the importance of kindness, right? I mean, I think we almost think kindness is just something everybody should just know how to be kind, so we shouldn't even talk about it. But a lot of people, right, don't know how important it is to be kind. So what, how do you help inspire other people to be kinder? Hmm. How do you help people to be kinder? Well, you gotta treat each other with respect and dignity. Yeah. And like I even have a book that says that respect is a new all word. And a lot of people cause, sometimes cause us that. I still get caught by that, not every day. Sure. But, so, like, Everybody got to be respectful and, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's true, right? My mom used to always say it's just as easy to be nice. She used to say it's harder to not be nice because it's really in our nature to be nice. So it's just as easy to be a nice person. Why not do that? And, and I talk yes. a lot about, um, I, I have a, a, a peace movement, the peace, love, kindness, unity movement. And I talk about yeah, how like, kindness yeah. is sort of the lost word in there sometimes. That if we all yeah. just like changed our life by 5% and did more kind things, right? A couple extra thank yous, a couple extra you're welcomes, hold a door for someone, tip a little extra, smile 10 times more at people. The whole world did that right. at once, right? It would be like an explosion of kindness that would literally change the face of the world. And it would just take one day to do it. Just one day, everybody getting kinder. And so I applaud you for being somebody who is working to make the world a kinder place and to using through your advocacy, because I too am an advocate for many of the communities I'm a part of, to use your advocacy to raise the, the, the positive in the world and not to do it through being angry or being bitter. Or I mean, it's easy to get angry when you see communities that you love being treated not the way you want them to be treated. But I think that, that um, you know, love inspires more love, kindness inspires more kindness, uh, peace inspires more peace. If you approach something angrily, I think it just brings more anger. And so I think the way that you're saying, look, we all should have respect and dignity for one another, but we're going to do it in a way that's kind. I think it's so important, sweetheart, because um, uh, we, need, we need to bring more nice into the world and more love. How do you feel about love? When you think about kindness and love, do they kind of go hand in hand for you? I've been taught I'm kind-hearted together because I've been taught that many times, especially yeah. from day with you. Day but yes, together because... You gotta make peace together. Gotta help each other. If, like if somebody falls down, you fall back with them and help them back up. And that's the beauty of helping people as yeah. well. Because if you see someone like that, you'd be like, oh, wow, I had a moment, you know? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. When I first went to teach at uh, Performing Arts Studio West, David said, uh, just be prepared you're going to get a lot of hugs. Yeah. And I thought, isn't that sad that we have to prepare people sometimes for how many hugs they're going to get? Because I think the more hugs, the better. I mean, I think, great, there's a lot of hugs, that's a bonus. Oh, that's one of the things I miss most about going in, you know? Oh, God, me, me about being there the couple hey. times I've been there, I miss it. Yeah, hugs I, are healing, you know? Hugs, you literally heal yourself with hugs. And there's, you know, that, this, that scientific experiment that I love that, that says that you know, your cells in your body actually change depending on the, 
the kindness and love that you are given or the anger and hatred that you are given. So I really believe that, that when we get hugs and when we, when we love each other, when we're kind to each other, that it actually really changes us. It makes us happier people, but it also makes us healthier people. Right. I mean, hugs are all there are. So, so the fact that this is sort of your, your work for the earth, sweetheart, that you are spreading kindness and, and love and, and encouraging people to have respect and dignity for each other, I, I think that's beautiful. Um, so, Gina, I have one question of you, please. which yeah. just popped in my head. Since yeah. we are in quarantine right now, right, and you know us, we like we're used to getting hugs all the time. Right, so we yeah. can't get those actual hugs right now. How can yeah. we get that energy, the, that think, hug energy? It's like when we talked about doing a virtual hug earlier. Right, you have to sort of imagine that. You know, when I when I do my um, my interfaith service, we have a thing called. Uh, passing of the peace, love, kindness, and unity, which with an actual people there during the service, people get up and they shake hands and hug with people they don't know. And you meet people and they always say, make a friend. When you, when you leave today, make a friend. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So now that we do it virtually and there's no congregation and there's no audience, I tell people, okay, we're going to take a little break. And while I'm speaking, I want each of you to email or text or call like 10 people you know and just say hello and reach out to people that are in the chat room right now reach out to people who are on facebook that you don't know and make a friend because um there are ways to reach out the thing about a hug is it's an exchange of energy so you can totally do that without actually touching someone but you have to reach out with yourself and i think it it means being a little vulnerable and some people are uncomfortable. You get scared you're going to get hurt. You're going to send somebody a nice text. They're not going to text you back. You know, it can, it can be a little, a little scary, but we all kind of have to put ourselves out there, right? Because if we don't, then we're going to live in a hugless world. And that makes me very sad. So, you know, just because you can't touch people with your body right now, you can still touch people with your soul and your mind and your heart. And we have this wonderful thing called the internet where you can, could literally talk to hundreds of people a day if you wanted to, probably even more if you really put some effort into it. So. And you could go right up to your computer and say, I'm giving exactly. you a hug. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay, there you go. You. That's a, yay, we're all hugging now. Yay. Or, okay. or like a, do the little heart. That's beautiful. See, I can't even make a heart with heart. my hand. Can you do a heart? You see why I was worried about how my website like would look? Uh, can you yes. guys hear me? Yes. You sure can, sweetheart. How are you? Okay, Mike, great, great to meet you. I just want to make sure I didn't want to interrupt. I just want to make sure that I, you know, that my camera is, my uh, audio was actually uh, working. So You're yeah, right. I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing Yay. great. Excellent. I'm happy Hi, to Mark. be here. Hi, Hi this is the happiest day of my life because I'm here with you right now. Oh, I'm honored to be here with you, my friend. Uh, and every time I do Zoom, I'm always working, you're worried something's not working and no one can see me. So it's not just you, my friend. Okay. So how are you, Mark? Tell me about what you do as an artist and what you're bringing to the world through art. Well, I am now living here in Los Angeles on, 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 a, on a fluke. Uh, I uh, started writing a book in 2010. Wow about my life and i really i knew i had some kind of disability but i was uh i was i was i, I was diagnosed with autism living life with autism the world through my eyes as you can see uh Beautiful. the book and i just instantly and you know it just sparked there was a passion to spark i i'm i'm a shot i'm uh shadowing what uh kaylee does helping inspiring uh, others and uh, i wrote this book I've given speeches. I used to live in all over South Florida, venues, uh, place in South Florida. I don't know if you heard of it. It's what Leaps and Bounds is in Los Angeles. It's called the Dan Marino Foundation in for a lot of uh, Florida, where one of the Miami Dolphins' son had autism. So he opened up an organization uh, for his son and, and, and others where they teach uh, individuals you know, that are uh, neurological life learning skills, uh, how to get a job, how to fill out an application, how to present a, uh, a resume that go out in, into the field and locate jobs uh, for these uh, individuals. 
and just basically teach them life learning skills, uh, cleaning up during during laundry, basically household chores, going to the grocery store, and basically skills that you need for survival. So I did that here. I did the, I did one out in uh, Los Angeles, and one of the directors were wowed. You know, I gave the same speech, the same spiel uh, there. So she introduced me to Farmer Art Studio West, but I would have to move. I went down there to talk to John Pazes, did a couple of orientations. I loved what I saw, and I think, wow, I can do so much more here in Los Angeles that I can do uh, in uh, uh, South Florida. I was brought to tears watching the, the TV show uh, Born to Way, about Born, uh, uh, Born this Way, to seeing some of the difficulties and the rejections. You know, in particular, two girls, you know, basically got rejected. You know, it was just heartfelt. Uh, uh, Rachel, with the fact that uh, nobody wanted to date her, and it was just like, if I had magical powers, I would have just jumped to the screen and just taken her someplace nice for dinner. And uh, Megan, when her boyfriend uh, uh, dumped her, I would have just like, you jumped right to the screen and just given her all kinds of uh, comfort and take her out someplace nice and just let her know, even though we're disabled, people have a tendency to put labels on us because we're uh, disabled. And my, and my thing is, I have, uh, just like one of the statements is for born this way, don't uh, limit me. My statement with uh, autism is, uh, autism is not a death sentence, it's just a roadblock, just go down the avenue to meet your success. I mean, in my, in, in, in my universe, there's no room or, uh, for bullying. It won't be uh, tolerated. This needs to stop for any pe people with disabilities, race, or, or, or creed. We were meant to live here in perfect peace and harmony, and that's me and Kaylee. We're, we're both promoting that peace and hum harmony and love for all fellow men. Uh, one of my goals is uh, my 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 fiance has uh, also is learning to do filming and and editing. And one thing I mentioned uh, to her, born this way is you know is is in everybody's sorry. It's just a, a well loved uh, program. Like eventually she may uh, move out here. My uh, my my game plan is to maybe do something like that. You know, we can like film it. Maybe if the quarantine is still going on, maybe we could do it uh, virtually. Put it up on YouTube, and I, I bet you instantly it's going to go viral and probably get millions and millions of likes because that show is very very popular. And if you get a certain amount of likes on YouTube, they pay you money. So that was one of my ideas, Joe, so we could further keep this show going for the viewers who love this show. So I basically got ideas. Also, I just finished writing a second book. Also, uh, a second book. The second book is going to be called uh, Living the Autism Dream because this is what I'm doing now. And I'm also, while we're in quarantine, I wanted to do this last year, start writing a, a movie. And this movie you know, that I'm writing is about a boy who gets killed, but reincarnation into the same uh, body. Now that I have the time that we're in quarantine, I'm still not uh, working, and I don't know when I will be working, but we're doing things uh, uh, f from home or wherever uh, we are. For four months, I was quarantined in South Florida, and thank God that we have this so we can all basically stay uh uh, connected. So I'm on a positive role here. I'm very, very happy, you know, and uh, also uh, as last year as an Uber driver, I met this, uh, I met two people from the Earth, Wind and Fire, a band member and one which we're eventually going to do a uh, Meet the Biz. We also, he wants to do the, you know, a uh, uh, a documentary with me. Maybe I can get some others with uh, Kaylee and the, and the singer Sheldon Reynolds. He's in his first stage of Parkinson's. He's in his first stage of Parkinson's. So we're looking that down the road. In addition, he called me uh, uh, last week 
there's an autism charity event in 2021 at Dodgers uh, Stadium. Maybe she and some others can come on board and do that. So it's just like so many things that I'm working on. It's just like, what do I do next? I'm just, I just want to be a immersed on everything at the at, at the same time just like uh, like Kaylee it's just like even though we're in quarantine I'm busier now than I've ever been with every all my achievement and goals that I want to uh, uh, achieve for the good of humanity you know beautiful you know all, all yeah. of us all four of us you're all kind of speak my language because I think that um, there are people who just sort of want to sit back and live their life for themselves and then there are those of us that it's really important to us to be immersed in the whole of everything in the world and to be doing everything that we can to make the world a more beautiful place. And I love that. You know, it's, it's interesting because I, um, I have a lot of friends on the autism spectrum and I've taught a lot of folks on the autism spectrum. And um, it's, to me, I think it's, and a lot of folks that have Down syndrome as well, um, friends and have taught. I think it's so important that we celebrate each other's differences and we stop worrying about how different we are. Because the truth is everybody's different. And, and I think the more we learn about energy, the more we learn that different people just function on a different energetic frequency, it doesn't mean that they are less than or they're not enough. It just means they're different in the same sense that all of our singing voices are different, right? Some people sing very high, and some people sing right. very low, but there's no right or wrong. It's just where is the frequency of where you sing? And I think it's the same thing with our minds. Right. Some, some brains are at one frequency and some brains are at another frequency and we're all different. So I think that the more that, that we all kind of spread that word, right? That, that we right. are who we are. We were all born the way we are. And there's nothing less than about any of us. We're just different. And once you realize that you're just trying to figure out something different, it's like when you have a dog and a cat in the beginning, they're like, what is this? And then they learn to get along and they're like best friends and siblings. I think if we thought of it like that as people, I have a friend, I don't know, David, if I've ever told you this story. I have a friend who works in the spiritual world and he's a dolphin communicator. Oh, and he was doing my radio show. He, ta he talks to dolphins. And one day he was doing my radio show and I asked him, why is it that dolphins have such wonderful success working with folks on the autism spectrum? And he said, it's because a dolphin meets you just where you're at. A human being expects you to meet them where they're at and that we should all be more like the dolphin. And he said, that's why I like to do your radio show, Sheena, because you're like, you interview like a dolphin. Oh, I love and I that. Think we all need to be like that. Be the dolphin, meet somebody where they're at don't expect somebody else to act just like you because none of us are the same and none of us are, are just the same and we wouldn't all want to be just the same it would be a boring world and i think we spend so much time worried about like who has a quote-unquote disability which i think of more like a difference we're all different right we all come in different shapes and sizes our brains are different our hearts are different stop trying to make everybody different and start thinking of all of us as the same and we're all doing our own thing because the world needs all of us, right? The world can't function without all of us. So my mama used to say that the world was like a giant machine and each one of us were little cogs and wheels in that machine. And we all had to do our own thing so the big machine ran smoothly. And if any of us felt like we weren't enough or we weren't doing our thing, we actually held up the machine. And if you think of the energy of the world, right? It's, it flows better when we're all happier and doing our own thing. Mm. And we're all exactly as we're supposed to be. We were all put here just the way we're supposed to be. And we're all different. I challenge you to show me somebody who's not different in some way. So Mark, I love that. I love your enthusiasm. I love your energy. I love how you want to make the world a better place. Kaylee, the same thing, both of you. Um, David, always, right? We have these discussions all the time that our whole lives are devoted towards making the world a better place. David and I go get sushi, and the whole time we just talk about how we can make the world a better place. Ah, uh, so, we have yeah. sushi, right? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, I go to the grocery oh, yeah. store and get sushi, because that's what, that's what it's come to now. <laughs> well, you know what's so amazing about both of you? You yeah. are so, I mean, you change lives just by being yeah. you. 
I mean, yeah. and both of you are doing so much. I mean, I, I, excuse my, um, what is it? Um, Zoom pants. But um, oh, I have, oh, look at you. I look have, you. I remember, I thank you, they're, they're swim trunks. And my legs usually look better, but these are, you know, anyway. Right. <laughs> but we don't go out anymore. Okay. <laughs> it, let me see this. I, I, isn't this, is this yeah. you? This, yes, it is. That is me. I'm on a coin with a, from the police department. Um, I was all the way down from downtown LA doing Fish and Memphis World Games. And I was doing that. Wow, you're a metal holder. And that's yeah. your that's your picture on there, huh? Yes, that is me. I right. feel like I'm like in George Washington. Uh, any kind of like any kind of like past president related. I feel like I've accomplished a lot from now. And now I'm on a point just like they are on a dollar bill. So and then so you guys don't see that very often. Yeah. That's beautiful. David, can you read it? So for people that can't see it? Oh, yeah. Uh, Do you know what it says? Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, let me win. But if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. Oh, that's beautiful. Los it's Angeles it's Police Department Special Olympics. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. And David, you have that at your place. You must be special. Uh, well, My mom I have a special family. Because he is really special to all of us. And he he's is really special, to right? All of us, to all like, I even call him an uncle's monkey for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what reason? Yeah. <laughs> Once they have a name, it's a part of the family, no oh. matter what. Uh, Uncle David. Well, and, and you know, the things, when I used to grow up, when I used to grow up, when I grew <laughs> up. <laughs> Before you gave I'm up not... the idea that you were ever growing up, which yeah. I have. You're right. I never did grow up. I, I'm Peter Pan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I would love to see you as Peter Pan in one of these days for Halloween. <laughs> uh, oh, I'd love to do that. When, when we get out, I'm getting some green tights. <laughs> oh, come on, David. You know you already have green tights. <laughs> but I tell you, I have uh, the things that I, you know, when I was growing up, I used to collect the Wicked Witch of the West, which I, is somewhere around here. And then <laughs> I still have that. Uh, and now, and I used to collect soundtrack albums. And and listen to you know uh, I had Streisand posters and this and that. Now that I have changed and and I, not that I've I'm not still a kid at heart, but I, one thing I do collect are hearts, different shapes of hearts. But the things that I love the most are things like this and and Mark's book. I got Mar uh, Mark gave me his book um, the other week, and so those are the things that I I cherish and love. It's those uh, the the items from people who are my extended family. Yeah. Yeah, I collect hearts too. I collect carved crystal hearts. It's like out of different rocks, different crystals. Oh, I love that. I have many. Yeah. I know I can't I just can't seem to resist one when I see it in a crystal shop. I'm like, oh I, I don't have this kind. Yeah, I, I there's something about the, the shape of a heart and holding a heart in your hand that's very magic. I have a heart that's made out of selenite, which is a crystal that it looks like a, a milky quartz. It looks like salt almost. Right. And I, I sleep with it under my pillow at night and it makes you dream better. I mean, I think that uh, there's a magic in the shape of a heart. This right. is, I, there's a reason why hearts were chosen for love, right? It's, they're a special thing. Yeah. I love that you collect hearts. Do you know, I used to be the same way. I used to have a lot of like kind of entertainment memorabilia and stuff. Now that I've shifted my life so much to being about the world and being about the spiritual world. I still have a lot of crystals and things like that, but I, I too have let go and I'm letting go of a lot of my sort of thir th three dimensional world stuff mm. for stuff that's more about the world. So I, I understand, I don't think it's growing up. I think it's just, um, 
growing into your higher human purpose, really. I think all of us, really, uh, right? We're all sort all four of us are really driven by uh, our higher human purpose, which is yeah. to heal and 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 make happy as many as we can. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, both, both Kaylee and Mark are healers, and David, you are as well, and I am as well. And, you know, some people I think are just have that gene inside of them, that flame, that drive to, to just heal people and make people better. Whereas I think a lot of people, and this is perfectly okay, like I said earlier, are just always thinking about how to make themselves better. They're not necessarily thinking about the world. I, and but, I think the way, too, to uh, what I've learned is by making others feel good, it comes again around to you because yes. then it'll make you feel good. So it'll I, heal, heal both of you or all of you. Yes, I agree. Completely agree. What does love mean to you, Tina? Oh, wow. Honestly, Kaylee, love means everything to me. To me, love is, it's, um, it's the, it's the way the ocean feels when you put your feet in it. It's, it's the way it feels to hold a puppy. It's, it's the way it feels when the sunshine hits your face. It's the way it feels when you're on stage with a bunch of people and you're all doing a play together and you're all putting your hearts and souls into this common thing. It's the way a hug feels. It's the way it feels when somebody says, you know, hey, you're great, or I love what you did, or thank you for this. It, it's a thank you. It's a smile. I mean, I think love is really the fuel that really runs the entire universe, and that without love, we would have nothing. So uh, everything I do, I do from a place of love. Everything I do, it's because of love. And um, I always say when I speak at my spiritual services that my true religion is love. And, uh, and David's known me a long time, and I think he probably would agree with that. I agree. Yeah. You know? So it's everything. The more love you can put into what you do, you, you'd be amaz amazed what it would, uh, what, it, what you can accomplish. It's interesting because sometimes when you learn the behind the scenes story of TV shows or movies or bands, you can actually feel the energy mm. more from the, from, you can feel more, a different energy from the piece of art, the, the show, the film, the band, the songs, if the, the people that put it together have a true love for each other. When, um, when somebody is, is in a band and the band members all love each other, the music actually feels different. It's like if you, if you go to a restaurant and you order the same chicken sandwich every day, and one day it's made by a chef who's putting a ton of love into it, the food actually tastes different. Love changes everything. So I think the more love we can put into everything, and the fact, sweetheart, that you're putting so much love into everything, and Mark, that you're putting so much love into everything, and David, that you always put so much love into everything, I mean, that's the easiest way that one person can change the world every day. I love that. And also, what does awareness mean to you? I'm sorry, sweetheart? What does awareness mean to you? Oh, wow. Um, again, it's all, it's all love and beauty. That's, that's to me, that, and, and connection. Being really connected to who you are, being really connected to the world around you, to the people in your life and, and really, really, I always really giving that love and getting that love back, you know? And, and I always say that when you're, when you're with somebody that you love or you're, you're having, like we're having a conversation right now, Kaylee, right? There's good energy coming out of me. It's going into you. It's coming out of you. It's going into me. And it's this beautiful circle. And if we could just do that in our lives every day with everybody in our lives, people, animals, we'd live in a much different world, you know? Yeah. That's okay. Thank you, Sam. You bet, sweetheart. My pleasure. So, Mark, you have a final question for uh, Sheena? Uh, uh, seeking, Mark. Yes. How do you handle a uh, negative uh, word? Uh, yeah, negative. Give an example. When I was 16 years old, I won't say which family member, but a family member uh, said the only thing you know how to do is sweep the floor. You'll be nothing but a, a floor uh, sweeper. Now, I ask you, do you see a broom in either one of my hands? Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. I mean, uh, that alone may, gave me the springboard, the trampoline even got 
uh, bouncer. I could, I could either, uh, that would motivated me to bounce higher than their negativity. My message in one of my uh, workshops that I give them, don't let anybody, uh, you know, uh, ruin your psyche with a, with a negativity, not even family members saying, oh, you're disabled. You want to act right? You want to be a doctor? What are you kidding? You're disabled. A lot of parents uh, will do that, and parents are their uh, kids' worst enemies, and just uh, lock, locking, uh, locking up, uh, uh, up in an institution because uh, they don't, you know, they don't have the passion for their kids to say, hey, they're people too, they're human beings, let me see what is in their hearts. And about, I would say, 75% of the people with disabilities can actually learn, they can grow, they can, uh, they can, uh, they, 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 they can uh, become achievers, they can find a way around their disabilities and even work to the fact that just like to the fact that they're high functionings that their disabilities uh disappear the thing is the brain is a muscle and and just like uh you know uh your bones your cardiovascular if you don't keep your cardiovascular going your bones like an athlete they'll stiffen up uh with you uh, on you yeah. but if you keep acting the same way with the brain it is a muscle you have to keep acting even if it's watching current events you know reading is the best way to keep your mind that'll definitely help keep you you know uh you know from getting um alzheimer's i'm not buying into all of these uh vitamins take these vitamins take that vitamins i'm not buying into all of that just basically eat right keep yourself physically and mentally uh uh, uh, he uh healthy so i'm i have no respect uh uh for those i mean even you know telling their kids that uh you know uh, about that but also if you do too much the other way is just give them false hope if they have a disability by telling them, oh, you're gonna be a lawyer, you're gonna be a doctor, you're gonna be a, an eternity. The thing is, you don't wanna give somebody false hopes, you know, that they're not able to reach their goals. Let, you know, you, can, you gotta, you, you know, you gotta keep an even uh, a keel, you gotta modify it, you, you gotta, you got, there's an in-between state. You just have to just, you know, tell them, I mean, there is Mark, always Mark, in what their you're heart. bringing up Mark, what you're bringing up is so important and it's such a good question to, uh, that you're you, that you're asking sheena too and and tell me if i'm right on that how do you deal sheena or how do you help people deal with those people whether whether it's some people's parents are wonderful and then some people they have difficulties or their friends or 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 their next door neighbors how do you deal with the negative people? Is that the pretty yeah. much the question? Sure. Yeah, let me just yeah. say really quick before that um, the idea that somebody can't become a doctor or a lawyer or whatever because they have autism, um, long before we knew what autism was and long before we were diagnosing people on the spectrum, people with autism were doing amazing things. My father was born in 1926. Mm. Now knowing what we know about high-functioning autism, he most definitely was. Um, he was a, a brilliant engineer, and he had a lot of difficulties as a person in his personal life, but as, as an engineer, he was brilliant. He has 28 patents in Washington for different things he designed as an electrical, mechanical, and aerospace engineer. He worked on a lot of exciting things, including things for NASA. So nobody told him, you're different, therefore you can't do this. Somebody just said, look, you've always been different, but you're good with this. Why don't you try this? So I think we need to make sure with folks that we don't tell them because you have a diagnosis or because you have a quote unquote disability, which I like to call a difference. You can't do this, this, or this. I mean, you know, people write books, uh, you know, the, the gentleman that wrote My Left Foot, right, could literally move a toe and wrote books his whole life with a typewriter back in the day before computers. You know, you know look at Stephen Hawking. We can't, we can't tell people you can't do because of this. And the thing is, is that we inside of ourselves, Mark, to answer your question, we have to build a strong connection 
to us and a strong connection to whatever we believe in as far as our spirituality, even if that's just, I, I love the world. We have to build a very strong connection to the earth and the world and a very strong connection to people who love and believe in us. So when others come in and they say, you can't because you are autistic, because you have Down syndrome, because you're overweight, because you're a woman, whatever the excuse is, we have to say to ourselves, well, it's, that's your opinion, but I don't let that affect me because I've built this strong wall of love around me. And, and I know within myself, with the world, with spirit, with the people in my life, all know I can do anything. So what you're saying doesn't matter to me. And, you know, I had this wonderful actress friend, Barbara Tarbuck, who I loved. And I used, she very suddenly passed, and I miss her to this day. The last time I saw her, I was going through a hard time with some folks. And she said to me, you know what, sweetheart? Sometimes it's just them. And it got me really thinking. I think it's a wonderful way to think. When someone comes at you and says, you can't do this because of this an X, Y, and Z excuse, you're not enough, you're too much of something, you'll never make it, people with this don't get this, whatever the story is. Yeah. You have to think, sometimes it's just them. And what is the lack inside of them that they're worried that you're not gonna ever do anything but push a broom mark? They should be worried about what they're gonna do with their own life and their own destiny and let you dream and wish for whatever you want. So somebody who tells you you are less than or you're lacking in something, is somebody who's just worried that there's a lack inside of them. I mean, it's, it's really that simple. It's, it's, uh, there's an expression in the spiritual world that I love, your eyes are mirrors. And it means that when people look out and see something, sometimes they're seeing a reflection of themselves. So if people see you're not enough, they're seeing the mirrors, they're seeing I'm not enough. And they're worried there are things they can't do. So you just have to remember old Barbara Tarbuck, right? Sometimes it's just them. And you can't take it seriously because nobody can tell yeah. you who or what well, you're going to be. You know, you know who you are and you know what you can be. Uh.